And uh, a buddy of yours, and I say a buddy of yours because I haven't had the, uh, the the opportunity to meet this gentleman as of yet, but ESPN Steve Kim, mm -hmm. who is not necessarily a buddy of Clarissa Shields, <laughs> he, he wrote an outstanding article today on ESPN, and uh, he talks about um, the possibilities or the prospects of a uh, promotional trades in boxing now if you if you if you look at it if you look at it like this right one thing that i really appreciate as a content creator myself is i really appreciate people right now who are being creative and coming up with content in a time period where their sport that they cover is not producing live events right so this is a compelling article that uh steve dropped this morning and I thought, uh, you know, I thought it really garnered some com uh, conversation. And I think it has some validity because we saw a promotional trade take place in mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time that ever happened, we had Demetrius Johnson on our show uh, on Monday. But Demetrius jo Johnson was a centerpiece in a trade between the UFC and one championship. The UFC sent Demetrius Johnson, the greatest flyweight champion of all time to one championship where he would be better appreciated because it's not there's no size bias in asia and they are totally into as demetrius talked about on our show if you haven't got an opportunity to see that make sure we're going to put the link to the to his segment of the interview in the description but he totally talked about how one championship builds heroes they know how to hone in on one person's uh appeal then you got ben Askren who was itching to try to prove himself in the United States against uh, American uh, fighters and against fighters uh, from a promotion based in North America because he is American. It was a good fit, good swap for, and a sensible swap for both. So I'm asking you, Peter, I'm gonna open this mm -hmm. up and I wanna hear what you have to say first. Um, talking about some of the things that Steve Kim put in here, give me some of your thoughts on stuff like Vasily Lomachenko and Miguel Burkelt going uh to uh, you know from top rank for errol spence yeah i mean look first of all steve is a buddy and uh i've gotten to know him because he's written stories for espn and a lot of the fighters i manage and mm -hmm. and I, I read everything else he writes and he's at all the fights and uh i find him to be an upstanding guy and, and a very good journalist but um this was an interesting piece to kind of ponder and think about mm -hmm. and and then, and and then really try to put all the pieces together to see how things could work out, right? Yeah. You know, could PBC make better use of Lomachenko and Burchelt, right? Mm -hmm. You know, are there more compelling matchups uh, at either 30 or 35 for Lomachenko that PBC could bring to the table? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we know that Errol Spence Jr. coming to top rank would make a, uh, a Crawford uh, uh, Spence fight much easier. Much easier. Right. Not not to mention not to mention. Um, yeah. Well, no. I, I want to hear what you got to say. I want to hear what you got. So say. I mean, look, I because I understand mm -hmm. how, and I, and I and I know a lot of other people do understand on the surface how it all works. Meaning, this fighter signs with this promoter. This promoter has the exclusive rights to promote that fighter. That fighter fights on the platform distribution platform that the promoter provides, mm -hmm. and it's a very simple model. And the promoter continues to promote the fighter, continues to put him on that platform, uh, whether it's on the, the free uh, cable version or the streaming version or the pay-per-view version. So you have to say to yourself, like an NFL team, right? What, what is the promoter or what would the promoters be looking at? And what criteria would they be assessing to determine if that trade would benefit them in the long run, because they already know how much they're making on television. They know what they're getting at the live gate. You know, they, they know what it's bringing them as a company, as far as revenue is concerned, what would inspire them to take on? Is it that, well, if we can get our hands on Spence, this fits in really well with the fact that we need somebody for Crawford to fight on a mega level. And this makes that fight. And that would make up for any money that we might lose by not promoting Lomachenko and Burchelt. And on the other hand, PBC could say, look, we've already got three other champions. You know, we're okay letting go of Spence to go over here and fight Crawford because we're going to be able to make really good use of Lomachenko and Burchelt with these other 30 and 35 pounders that we have. So yeah. 
that's you know that's what kind of comes to mind it's it's wondering what goes on in the the war room to to determine if that would be viable for either company to say you know what let's make that let's make that trade well you know what here's my thing i love the concept of a, of trading right and i love it it's just fantastic because boxing needs something else official to be able to talk about besides the results and that sort of thing because quite a as somebody else as somebody who covers more than one sport right boxing mma and then even some football and basketball Mm -hmm. the one thing i appreciate about football and basketball is that there is so much real so many real stories outside of the games themselves right there's free agency with basketball and football and baseball there's these trades there's drafts it's all and this is all real information this is all real stories there's no speculation in boxing everything else just almost everything else that comes out about the sport besides who won and lost is speculation almost right. everything right. almost everything so i would love i love the concept but that said I don't like a trade, that particular trade, like um, Lomachenko and Burke Kelp for Errol Spence. Right. Because here's the reason why I don't. is because Errol Spence with top rank, I think top rank gets the short end of that deal in a major way. Because the only real fight in that is Spence Crawford. And then after you determine who's superior, or maybe you had them fight two or three times. Well, I was going to say, what if it becomes a trilogy? If it, it could be a, could be a home but, run. But here's the thing. What if somebody gets knocked out in the second round, mm-hmm. which could happen? What if somebody okay. gets just totally blown away, which could happen, which probably doesn't because skill level wise, they're probably way too comparable for something like that to happen. But it could happen. Then what are you left with after that? And then if you look at it, if it does become a trilogy, OK, it's a trilogy. How long does that go? That goes for a year or two, year and a half, you know, 18 to 24 months if they do it with any level of you know, regularity. I just don't think there's a lot of future there after that because top rank's biggest problem right now with Terrence Crawford is finding viable people for him to fight. So now you bring him only one fighter for him to fight for the rest of his career to create some sort of uh, some, some, some sort of draw besides Crawford himself. Mm-hmm. I think top rank gets the short end of that deal. I think PBC gets to be put in a great position because not only do you get Lomachenko Davis, Mm -hmm. You know, there's other fights that you then get an opportunity to try to make. Um, But and I also think it hurts. It hurts top rank because Tiafimo Loma is a is a big fight that that could be made and you lose that fight. You know, so I I, yeah, I don't like that one. I don't like that one for. um, But it makes us think. Yeah, it makes you think because, because now I'm already I'm already thinking. Well, then maybe you know you go which divisions. So mm-hmm. then, for instance, a better trade could be Crawford going to PBC, mm-hmm. and in return, maybe Top Rank gets a couple of heavyweights that haven't been able to fight. Uh, you know, that makes more sense. You know, what I mean? because because PBC right. has some more. He- maybe you bring Kaunaki over. I don't know. Maybe you bring even Wilder over. Maybe I don't know. There's there's there are options over there. That may see to me. I wouldn't ever want to trade the top draw in any of those divisions if i was one of these promoters because if you trade like so i wouldn't trade wilder you don't get wilder and you don't get spence you get jermaine franklin you get well that's not pbc but right. you're talking about you know showtime you don't you don't get you get cal mm-hmm. uh you get you know another heavyweight that's uh you get ruiz maybe you don't get wilder because what i'm doing is i'm still want to have this open for us to have this cross promotional fight where everybody makes a lot of money with a wilder fury kind of a fight but what i'm doing is i'm giving you some of my lower level assets to come over the top rank to help build your guy up more because now i'm giving him more viable opponents and now right. you're building your guy up more for when we do come back together and have this huge cross promotional event. So the other side of this whole thing is, you know, one easy thing that promoters can do is simply just work together, like they did with Wilder that, Fury that, too. That, that that fixes everything. It just right? makes it so much easier because the fans listen. And I said this before: the fans mm-hmm. rewarded PBC and Top Rank 
mm-hmm. for making that fight by being the third largest gate yeah. in Nevada heavyweight championship history. Yeah. I mean, if, when you were only coming behind Tyson fights right. and, and, and Lewis, what, I think it was Tyson Lewis and I forget Tyson the Lewis was in Memphis, I believe. Uh, okay, I thought I thought Tyson Lewis was the one was one of the one of the top two. Maybe it wasn't for Vade, for Vada Nevada, but I don't know. Right. I can't remember. But look, uh, the point I'm making is that you know it, when they when they work together to give mm-hmm. the fans the fights that they want, right? The fans usually reciprocate. Now I know they probably didn't make that that million buy number they were looking at, but they they still did a, a good amount of buys in the seven hundred thousand. It's not what they wanted. But uh, but they, you know, but but what I'm saying is, you know, it, it was a very, it was a, it was a great way to show how these two networks could work together. So ultimately, I mean, I don't think you have to do trades. Obviously, trades are compelling to talk about. I'd be interested in knowing what our viewers think and what kind of kind of trades they would make amongst promoters. That would be. But awesome. but you know, but it's it's definitely it was definitely an interesting piece. And like you said, in a time where there are no live events, mm-hmm. it was uh, an excellent topic to to make you actually stop what you're doing. And think about those different scenarios. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Kudos to Steve for sure for uh, drumming that up.